Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about paintbrushes. Welcome to the Artist's Outpost. This is a subject that gets frequently overlooked. I don't know that we need to spend a great deal of time on it, but I've been getting the same question often enough now from young artists that I feel like I need to go ahead and just take a moment and address the topic head on. Specifically, it's this. Is there a proper way in which you're supposed to hold a paintbrush? Or, uh, geez, I can't get comfortable holding a brush in my hand. What am I doing wrong? Well, the short answer is this. Yes. Paintbrushes have been designed a specific way in order for you to get the optimum performance out of them. Um, I feel like in order to talk about it properly, this may get just a little tedious right in the beginning, so bear with me. There's a reason that paintbrushes evolved over the years the way they did. Paintbrush manufacturers really have tried to design them in a way so that they're easy to use and comfortable to hold. I also kind of have my own ideas as to why all of a sudden this is becoming a problem with young artists. So let's get started. An artist's oil painting brush is a very simple tool. It's made up of those three basic parts, the handle, the ferrule, and the bristles. And that ferrule makes it possible to derive different bristle shapes, like flats, rounds, filberts, brights, rigor, fan. You get the idea. That list goes on. I'm not going to go over the uses for the different bristle configurations at this point. Um, I'll save that for a formal painting class down the road. The bristles come in a variety of different materials. Vegetable hair, synthetic, squirrel hair, red sable, hog's bristle. This list goes on too. Okay, that's the boring part. Now, I want to talk about the two design elements in an artist's paintbrush that make it truly unique. First of all, Look at the length of the handle on this oil painting brush. The reason for this is so that an artist can stand as far back away as possible from his easel and still reach his painting. This allows you to firmly plant your feet so that you can look back and forth between your subject and your painting using only eye movement. No back and forth head movement or leaning your body because you're too close to your work. With a clear view of both your work surface and your subject, it's easier to arrange your composition and you can measure your proportions using just your eyes. Painters that work really large often employ brushes with handles that are three and four feet long. These are mostly mural artists or folks who are just working on really, really large canvases, but it's not uncommon. The idea is to keep from having to continually step back away from your work in order to take in the entire composition. Now check out this swell that happens in the handle behind the ferrule. It's about a third of the way down the brush. This isn't here just to give the ferrule more surface area to hold on to. It's actually a very specific and purposeful design element of the brush in order to alter its balance and help take some of the fatigue out of your hand. Originally bristles were just wrapped onto the end of a stick and all the weight of the brush was concentrated on that tip. This may seem like a minimal issue till you've had to use that brush all day. As your hand tires, you begin to slowly lose some of your control. By shifting the weight behind the ferrule, the balance of the brush is altered and the weight is taken off of that tip. By positioning your grip behind the swell, you can slide the handle up and down through your fingers until you find that sweet spot that gives you the optimum control over the bristles, especially when it comes time to control details. All of this applies to watercolor brushes as well. The only exception is that by the wet nature of the medium, the brush is positioned perpendicular to your arm rather than parallel. And it has a shorter handle. Otherwise, the use is exactly the same. Brush manufacturers will tell you that brushes are intended to be pulled, never pushed. I think the idea is that the tips of the bristles are kind of always supposed to be following in the direction in which you're going. Otherwise, you're just damaging the integrity of the hairs and you're shortening the life of the brush. Having said that, I know a ton of really great painters who burn through brushes like they're corn chips. I've been guilty of it myself. 
In the real world, artists are just rough on their tools. The same with contractors, bakers, landscapers. You do whatever is necessary in order to get the results you require onto that painting. If this means mistreating your paintbrushes, then you accept that as a price that you have to pay in order to work in this medium. I want to point out that I am especially cautious with my watercolor brushes. These Kalinsky Red Sables, depending on the size that you buy, can run between $200 and $400 a piece. They're totally worth the investment. I get awesome results out of them. But you can see why I would baby them a good deal more than I do my hog's bristle oil brushes. I've painted a good deal with other artists and I've observed their processes. Regardless of all their differences, all of them, without exception, employ the exact same three methods of holding a paintbrush when they're doing their work. This first one, I kind of like to think of it as holding a sword. It's the grip you'd use when you're standing back away from your work. Some artists have been known to use this one almost exclusively, even when they're working close up. I find it to be a really expressive way to apply paint. The second method is similar to the way you would hold chopsticks, and it's really effective with the bristles pointing either direction. It's held lightly, using only your fingertips, and the brush is drug across the canvas with the handle almost parallel to the painting surface. I think I hold the brush too lightly with this method. I'm always dropping it. Now this third way of holding a paintbrush is the most common, and you're going to be really familiar with it. It's the one that happens naturally anyway. It's the way we were taught to hold a pencil when we very first started school and we're learning to write our alphabet. We're taught to take these three fingers and bring them all together so that you can slip a pencil in between the three and choke way up on that pencil lid and have full control of the tip. We rested our hands against the paper and arced our wrist and moved our fingers in order to draw our letters. This grip works perfectly fine for painting as long as you're holding the brush behind the swell and you're using your elbow and your shoulder as your fulcrum for movement. You can comfortably cover way more area this way. Everyone naturally falls into this one. Be aware that your ability to draw is going to have way more impact on your results than what brush you use or how you hold it. Practice these three methods and work with it until it gets comfortable in your hands. Pretty soon you're not even going to have to think about it anymore. I'm just going to speak briefly here about digital tools, mostly because the technology behind the hardware is still changing so incredibly fast that I think maybe it would be better served in its own video where I can update it a little more easily. Now speaking as an old school artist, I think of digital tools as simply another medium. All mediums have their advantages and certainly they all have their limitations and you have to be willing to deal with its individual idiosyncrasies in order to gain some control over it. The digital tools that we use today were not created by artists. They were designed and developed by engineers who all went to school and learned to hold a pencil like this. I think it's interesting that they've designed a swell into it, kind of like a brush. It prevents you from choking way up on the end. Um, I think the thing was designed in order to be held further back so your index finger rests comfortably on the toggle. Still, the thing is more pencil than it is anything else, and it's designed, for the most part, to be held and used perpendicular to its work surface in order to function properly. But hold your breath. That's one of the things that may be changing in the future. It, don't be surprised if you find uh, your stylus is designed to be more like a brush. Hopefully I've covered enough material here on brushes to at least get you started. I realize they're awkward to get used to in the beginning. They work for me too. Concentrate more strongly on results and less on the process, and I promise you will adapt quickly. This is Ronnie Williford. Stay safe and hold your paintbrush like a sword. I know what boys like. I know what guys want. They want to touch me. But I won't let them, I know what boys like.